In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Memphis style typography. It's a very cool effect with these bold, bright splashes of color shining through behind outlined text. It looks kind of complex to make, but it's actually really straightforward. So let's dive right in. So this piece is inspired by some typography that I've been seeing around Pinterest recently that all has this similar kind of vibe to it. I don't know if there's like one designer that came up with this style. If there is, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to link to them. I'll also make sure to link to these pieces here in the description below so you can take a look if you'd like a little bit more inspiration. For now, let's dive in, let's start creating. Okay, so to start, let's make a new document. I made mine 4,000 by 5,000 pixels, but you can use any dimension you want. I set mine to CMYK because I wanna be able to use this on a printable poster, but again, it's entirely up to you. And if you prefer, you can also download my free template, which I'll link to below. It's basically just the document set up with my colors added as swatches to save you some time, but you can absolutely also just use your own colors if you like. And in fact, I do encourage you to do that to start flexing your creative muscles, start working them out, and you know, get used to picking different color combos. But if you aren't feeling that confident with colors yet, don't worry, I totally get it. Just use these for now and you can always practice your colors later. All right, so if you are using this template, make sure you're on this text layer here. If you're using your own document, just create a new layer and place it on top. Then press T to select your type tool. Click once on your document and add your text. Now you can just pick whatever quote you'd like, ideally something short and snappy and fun, something that'll look good on a poster. I'm gonna use the words, learn your craft. All right, then hit escape and let's scale this up holding Alt or Option and Shift just like this. And you can pick whatever font you'd like. I'm gonna go with the font Acrom or Acrom. Don't actually know how to pronounce that. It's a, um, it's a very slick and modern, nice font that you can download for free as part of your Adobe subscription. I'll make sure to link to that as well. But again, use any font you'd like. You just wanna make sure that you pick something that's nice and bold. If you pick something too thin like this, you won't have enough space inside the letters to place your elements. So ideally you want a bold or even an extra black font. And you'll see as we go on why this does make a difference. Okay, I'm gonna center align my text and then in the align panel, I'm also going to align it to the middle of the document. Now, it looks like this is already applied here, but if it isn't, one other thing that I do like to do is to add a little bit of tracking to the text, which is basically just expanding the space in between the different letters. It looks good without as well. I just think that it looks a little bit more elegant with a bit of space in between the letters. So just pick whatever tracking you'd like. I'm gonna go with 60. Now select your text and invert the fill and the stroke, either by clicking this button here or by holding Shift X. The stroke will probably look a little bit too thin at first, so let's thicken it up slightly. I think 10 looks great. Select your text again and copy it by hitting Command or Control C and then lock your layer. Select the layer underneath it and press Command or Control F to paste a duplicate version of this text in the exact same spot. All right, now with the text selected, right click and hit Create Outlines. You're gonna need these outlines in just a minute, but real quick, let me just show you the reason why we've set up our document this way. Uh, the reason we wanna create a new layer at this stage is we want all of our shapes to show up underneath the text outline like this. And by using a layer underneath, everything will automatically always go underneath that outline, so you don't have to worry about rearranging your layers as you go. It just makes life a little bit easier. Now at this stage, you could just start randomly adding shapes behind the text like this, and I'm just gonna quickly get rid of this stroke here. But what I personally think looks best is actually using the exact shapes and sizes of the letters to create your elements. And if you don't know what I mean, just bear with me, I will show you in just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna hit undo to delete these shapes and then zoom into the letter L. Hit M to select your rectangle tool. Make sure there's no stroke and pick a color. I'm gonna start with green, start with whatever color you like. Uh, and now rather than creating a random shaped rectangle like this, your design, like I said, is just gonna look a lot more harmonious and unified if we use the same shapes of the text. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, then click and drag a rectangle that's exactly the size of this bottom section down here. It should snap to the edges automatically if it doesn't, uh, just go to view and make sure that smart guides are turned on. Okay, so I'm gonna take my rectangle and using my arrow keys, I'm gonna move it just down and to the right a little bit, just like that. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
Now this same logic, by the way, applies not just to shapes, but also to any lines you add. You wanna make sure they're the same size, width, and angle as the lines in your text. And this is where your outline text that we made a few moments ago comes in handy. I'm gonna use the direct selection tool by pressing A, then click and drag to select just this line here. I'm gonna copy it and then once again, paste it in front by pressing Command or Control F. Then again, using my arrow keys and holding Shift, I'm going to move it out to the side and up a little bit as well. I'm gonna give it a color. Let's go with orange. Okay, I'm gonna move it a little bit closer actually. And one last thing I'm gonna do is head to the stroke window. And if you don't see that, just head to window and stroke. And under cap, I'm going to select a round cap. Now, it's not a huge difference, but as you can see, it just rounds out the ends of the line like this, which I just think looks a little better. All right, let's move on to the next letter, and I'm gonna show you another cool effect you can add. Once again, hit A to pick our direct selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag over the entire A to select it like this. Then I'm going to copy it and paste it in front. And I actually wanna turn this into a solid fill, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift X like I did before to invert the fill and stroke. Then change the color, I'm gonna make it yellow. And now using your arrow keys, again, move this down. And by the way, when you position your shapes, you wanna avoid having areas where things only just overlap like this, otherwise it can kinda of look like you made a mistake. So make sure there's a decent amount of overlap on each side. So I'm gonna move this out to the right a little bit more. There we go, I think that looks much better. Now one other thing you can try is to punch shapes out of these shapes that you're making to create some patterns. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna select this line right here and holding Option or Alt, I'm gonna click and drag it up here to create a duplicate. Then do the same thing to drag another copy to the right, this time holding Shift to move it in a perfectly straight line. And you basically want the white space in the middle here to be roughly the same width as the lines. Once you've placed it, hit Command or Control plus D to duplicate the line at exactly the same distance again. Then just keep hitting Command, Control, D until you have a whole bunch of these lines just like this. I'm gonna come back to this pattern a few times throughout this design, so what I'm actually gonna do is select it and group it by pressing Command or Control G. You can also right click it and click group. And grouping it is just gonna keep everything nice and organized. And now once again, duplicate drag this element down here to create another copy by holding Command or Control and dragging. I'm gonna stretch this just a little bit longer. And by the way, if like me, you're noticing that your lines are getting thicker as you stretch them, uh, it's because you have an option called Scale Strokes and Effects Enabled. So let's go ahead and switch that off. Just head to the Transform panel, click the Hamburger menu, and uncheck Scale Strokes and Effects. And by the way, if you don't have the Transform panel, just head to Windows and Transform. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this and then change the stroke back to 10 points. Okay, now I'm gonna drag it to this A, and I'm gonna rotate it until it's pretty much the same angle as this side of the A, and then position it over the A like this. We're gonna use this A shape as a clipping mask for the lines below, so to do that, you have to make sure that this A shape is actually positioned above the lines. If not, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command and left or right bracket to move things up and down the layers, as you can see here on the right. All right, once your A is above the lines, select both by holding Shift and clicking on them both, then right click and hit Make Clipping Mask. And by the way, if you right click and you don't see that Make Clipping Mask option, you can also head to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. To be completely honest, I have absolutely no idea why it sometimes shows up in the right click menu and sometimes it doesn't. I'm sure there's some logic to it, I just haven't figured it out myself yet. Uh, if you do know, maybe just let me know in the comments below. Okay, I just realized I should have changed the color of these strokes before making the clipping mask, but no big deal. If you wanna change the color, just double click the shape to enter the clipping mask group editor, and then click on your lines, and you can change the color up here. I'm gonna pick yellow. Then just double click anywhere on the canvas to exit the group editor again. All right, it's looking pretty good. So for this R, what I wanna do is I wanna add a line to this top right corner. So again, using the direct selection tool, I'm gonna to click and drag, selecting this bit right here between these two anchor points. I'm gonna copy it, paste it in front, 
and scoot it into the corner using my arrow keys. Now it's not perfect. You can see the angle is a little bit off. And if you do want to tweak this, you can just click on one of these anchor points and manually adjust the handles. But to be honest, I don't really think it's a big deal or all that noticeable when you're zoomed out. So I think that's totally fine. So let's give it rounded caps again and then change it to green. All right, so for this N, what I want to do is I want to emulate this angle in the letter. So I'm going to create a triangle. Uh, just hit P to select the pen tool. And again, if you have smart guides turned on, you can quite easily snap this to the same height as the line on the left. So click once, then hold shift and click here on the side and then create a right triangle. And what I'm going for here is I'm trying to keep the same angle as this line here. So once you're happy, click and then click again to complete this shape. Press Shift X to invert the stroke and fill. And let's move it around a tiny bit to position it. I'm actually going to move it out into the corner a little bit more to match my other shapes. OK, let's see what it looks like a little smaller. Nope. No, I prefer it bigger. All right, let's update the color. I'm going to pick orange. And by the way, if you're using three colors like I am, basically you just want to keep alternating them for the most part, but you can also play around with whatever combination you think looks good. Basically at the end, you just want a nice balanced design. All right, let's keep going with the Y. Let's create another line by selecting this side of the letter, copy and paste it to the front and then scoot it out to the side. And let's make this one yellow and give it round caps. All right, there we go. One other thing you can try with strokes is rather than moving them out to the side like this, you can also just try making a really thick stroke and placing it right underneath the outline. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So let's select this top section, copy it, paste it, and let's give it a green fill. And then I'm gonna head to the stroke and make it quite a bit thicker, just like that. Now just give it a round cap and there you go, just like that. That's a pretty cool and easy effect as well. For the U, I'm gonna make another line pattern shape like this, but this time let's try doing just part of it. So I'm gonna hit A, select this entire bottom section and copy it and paste it in front. And then with the direct selection tool still selected, I'm going to click this anchor here, hold shift and select this anchor, then right click and hit join. Then do the same thing over here. And once again, hit shift X to invert the fill and the stroke. All right, I haven't used orange in a little while, so let's select that. Now, if you wanna make this bigger, you could just scale it out like this, but as you can see, it might not scale very evenly on all the sides. Uh, some of these edges will just move further away than others, which isn't exactly what we want. So I'm gonna undo that, and instead, I'm gonna make sure it's selected and head to Object, Path, Offset Path. And what you'll see if you play around with the offset is that this effect will essentially expand your shape at a completely even amount in every direction. So I'm gonna make this roughly the same size as this overlap here. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Hit okay, and one thing I am noticing is that this has created a line at a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna select this anchor point. I'm gonna hold shift, select this one, and drag this down. There we go, that looks a lot more straight. Now let's select these lines here again, hold Option or Alt and drag to duplicate, then holding Shift, rotate the shape 90 degrees. And one thing I forgot to mention, when you use the offset path effect, Illustrator might duplicate that shape for you. So you can see here in the layer panel, if I hide this, that the original shape is still there. So you can just click the original and delete it. We're not gonna need it anymore. So let's re-enable the lines and I'm gonna zoom in and I wanna make sure that once I mask this, everything will look good. Let me show you what I mean with an example. So I'm gonna select the shapes, select the lines, and then I'm gonna right click, make clipping mask. Now you can see that if you don't space this very well at the very top or the very bottom, you might have some lines that are a different width to the others like this. So that's what I mean by making sure that everything is positioned well. So let's go ahead and undo that. Select the lines and move them up a little so that the lines aren't cut off in a weird way. All right, once you're happy with that, select both the lines and the shape, right click and make clipping mask. You can also change this after you've made the mask. So you can see here, for example, that there's a tiny bit of this line at the top poking through. Just hit V to pick your selection tool, 
double click the clipping mask and in the editing mode, use the direct selection tool to click this anchor and drag it down to change the shape of the clipping mask to hide those little bits of line. There we go. Okay, so far so good. For this R, let's create a rectangle shape. So let's zoom in, hit M to select the rectangle tool and then click and drag to create a rectangle snapped exactly to the shape. Let's give it a yellow fill and just move it out a little bit. There we go, perfect. For the C, let's do another one of these line effects. Rather than selecting the entire C, I'm gonna click and drag to select just the left side. I'm gonna copy it, paste it in front, select it and join these two anchors. Then do the same down here. Press Shift X to invert the fill and let's change the fill to orange. Then once again, let's head to Object, Path, and Offset Path. And I'm actually just gonna keep the exact same offset to keep everything consistent. Now remember that Illustrator will create that duplicate shape. So let's select the original and delete it. And then let's scroll up, select our lines, and then duplicate, drag them down here again. Let's rotate them at a little bit of an angle for this one. All right, again, zoom in to make sure nothing will be clipped in a weird way and making sure your C shape is positioned over the lines, select them both, then right click and make clipping mask. All right, perfect, nearly there. So for this R, I'm gonna add a little half moon shape. So I'm gonna hit L to select the ellipse tool. And then from the center here, I'm gonna click and holding either alter option and shift, I'm gonna drag the circle out just like this. Uh, let's give this a green fill and just kind of finesse it to roughly match the shape of the R. It doesn't have to fit 100% perfectly. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit A, select this anchor point on the left and delete it, and then drag everything off to the side up here, just outside of the letter again. Now I don't love the way this overlap is happening right in this corner, so I'm gonna click it and drag it out just a little bit. There we go. For the A, let's keep things simple. Uh, let's just select the right side, copy, paste it, and move it out. And let's give it a yellow fill and a round cap. Okay, so that's all of the basic techniques. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these last letters pretty quickly because you've seen how this works. Once you've built a couple of these different styles and effects, there's really no need to keep reinventing the wheel here. In fact, your design will probably look more harmonious if every letter isn't completely different, if you, you know, repeat some of these effects throughout it. So for the F, I'm gonna create a little rectangle. And for the T, I'm going to select these two lines and duplicate them out to the top exactly like I've shown you before. All right, just like that, that's all the letters decorated, looking good. One last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a background color to this poster. So let's quickly delete these lines. There we go. Then I'm gonna select the rectangle tool by pressing M and select a very light, almost white color. I actually picked one here in the swatches already. So I'm gonna unselect the stroke, pick that color, and then click and drag a rectangle from corner to corner then hit Command or Control, Shift, and left bracket to send this all the way to the back. And there we go, just like that, you have added your own very bold, very cool, very colorful style to your text. From here, just keep experimenting, try different colors, try different shapes. Obviously, depending on the quote you use, you're gonna have different letters to play with, so just see what kinds of cool things you can come up with to embellish those different letters. And if you do follow this, I'd love to see what you come up with, so please make sure to drop a link to your finished work in the comments below. If you found this useful, don't forget to hit subscribe for more tutorials like this, and if you wanna keep leveling up your Illustrator skills, check out this playlist. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all my viewers, but if you made it to the end, you are especially awesome and you know it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.